Hey everyone, my name is Chris and today I'm showing you 10 Lightroom hacks that you probably did not know. Um, I know there's a million hacks out there, but these are hacks that I actually use on a daily basis when I'm using or editing or working through my photos as an adventure and outdoor photographer and filmmaker. Let's check it out. Number one, Lightroom keyboard shortcuts. These are the ones I use every single time I'm in Lightroom. I know there's plenty more, but these are the ones that really speed up my workflow and just help me get around the application in a much more efficient way. Press E and D to flick between the library module and the develop module. Command L, that's a great one to turn off your filters. If you're looking at photos with filters on, so you want more two star photos and you've got some flags on and you're just looking at a filtered view. If you press Command L, you can turn off your filters, see all your photos, find the one that's somewhere lost in between, go do the edit, bring on that filter and press Command L again and your filters back on with that new photo in your collection. L and Shift L are a great way to turn off the lights and just remove all distractions just if you want to have a look at your photo without anything around it. The next one is Tab and Shift Tab is a great way to remove all the tabs around the panels. Command apostrophe is a great shortcut to create a virtual copy of the image that you're looking at. So if you're not quite happy with the edit and you just want to redo it but not get rid of the old edit because you kind of like it, then you can just create a virtual copy. It doesn't duplicate the raw file, it just creates another XMP file and that you can restart and re-edit from scratch. Really cool. If you right click on the little triangles on the side for the panels to bring them in and out, you can select manual and that'll freeze the mode of the panel. So you can either select it to be gone or out and it won't just pop in and out like it sometimes does when you hover there with your mouse by accident. It's all about gaining the maximum amount of space inside Lightroom. Shift Command E, that brings up the export panel and avoids you clicking around to export the photo. I use it every single time I'm in Lightroom. Press B to add a photo to the target collection. Now by default, that's the quick collection, but you can make any collection your target collection by right clicking on that collection and selecting set as target collection. And from then on, you can, or every time you press B, your photos will be added to that collection. Or if you press B again, it'll be removed out of that collection. Now, if you press Command B, your view will switch between your target collection and the current look collection that you're in. So it's a great way to jump into that collection and be able to have a look at the photos that you've already put in there and quickly clean up. It's the most efficient way to create a collection, really. Shift Command S to synchronize your settings from the current selected photo across to all the others that you've also selected. Now, the cool thing about this co combination is that it will pop up with the synchronization settings and you can deselect the things you don't want to bring across to the new photos. I use this all the time as I sometimes do spot removal or do local adjustments in the one photo and I like how it looks, but obviously I don't want everything to go across to the others. So I'm just going to take the basic settings, the curves, the t color adjustments, all that kind of stuff and synchronize that across, but not the graduated filters and so on. Double click to reset a slider. I use this all the time. If I'm not happy with my sliders, I'll just double click it and bam, it's back to zero. Now, another cool extra tip here, if you double click on the word of the panel, for example, the hue or saturation in the HSL panel, it'll reset every single slider in that panel. Really useful if you just want to restart and edit in a certain area or in a certain kind of adjustment. Press J to highlight the shadows and highlights and where you're losing detail. Highlights will be red, shadows will be blue. And that's really great if you're printing photos and you really don't want to lose detail in those areas. So you can adjust your image so you get the maximum amount of detail when it comes onto the print. Number two, smart previews. What are smart previews? Smart previews are low resolution DNG files that sit next to your catalog and they are editable, so they're not just a regular preview, they're an editable raw file just in a lower resolution of up to two and a half thousand pixels. You can export them, so you can use make JPEGs of it, you can fully edit them, and um, they're basically like a low resolution backup of your catalog. Now they're not meant as a backup, basically they will speed up your Lightroom by 200%. Um, if you keep your raw files in a different place to your Lightroom catalog, say you keep your Lightroom catalog on your computer or on an SSD drive and your raw files on an external HD, which I highly suggest, then you can detach your raw files or the drive with all the raw files and still work on your Lightroom catalog, edit your photos, make collections, do whatever you normally do, but you're working on your smart previews and it just automatically switches over to them. The good thing is they're tiny, they sit with the catalog, so they don't take up that much space. They're only about a tenth of the size of a raw file, so um, 
I have 100,000 images in my catalog and about 70 gigabytes. So that's about one terabyte or 1.2 terabytes of images. And I have 70 gigabytes of smart preview. So really, really small and um, easy to work with. Your computer is so much happier for working with smaller resolution, less information basically to process. To generate your smart previews, just select the images you want to generate them for. Go at the top, select library, then previews and generate smart previews. Or you can go over to your import window, press shift command I, and at the top right, there's a little box where you can select generate smart previews on import. And that will, from now on, every time you bring new photos into your catalog, generate previews for you. Number three, expand your panels. Often I find that Lightroom with the default width of my panel when I'm doing adjustments is just a little bit, it's really hard to get that just fine adjustment. So you can just pull it out and bam, your sliders are twice the length and much easier to move. Extra tip, if you press Alt or Option and pull the panel even further, you can go beyond the blocking where Lightroom would block it and you can make seriously long sliders and um, basically fill up your screen with slider and make use of that empty space. So it's really cool if you want to get those really fine adjustments. Um, I always have my sliders out at least to where Lightroom blocks them. Number four, the guidelines in your cropping mode. If you shoot with the rule of thirds or with the golden aspect ratio on your camera, then Lightroom has all these suggestions for you as well. It puts in those lines for you. But did you know if you press O in the cropping tool, then it'll flick between different modules and there's a whole bunch of really cool ones. Now, extra tip, if you press Shift O, then you can rotate those guidelines. So some of these actually have different orientation so if you want your guidelines to shift around a bit um, to where your focal point is or if you have a different kind of composition then press shift o and rotate the lines how you need them for your shot to help you get the perfect pleasing composition number five changing the mask color whatever tool you're in if you're doing a local adjustment graduated filter a radial filter or with just a brush adjustment tool if you press o you can turn on and off the mask so you can actually see where you're brushing or you can just select it in the tool bar at the bottom. Now, if you press Shift O, you can actually change the color of the radial or whatever adjustment tool. Now, where is that useful? When you're doing an adjustment on something red, a red car, um, a really bright red sky, something like that, then you can't always see your adjustment properly. So press Shift O and make it green and it'll pop out and it's much easier for you to see where you're doing your adjustments. Number six. The split toning masks, you can show where your mask is being applied by holding Alt while you're shifting the balance slider. That will show um, both colors at 100% and it will help you determine where exactly your split toning is happening. When you just want to bring some bright, some yellow into the highlight and some blues into the shadow, something like that, and you just want to make sure that it doesn't spill over too far, press Alt and slide across those sliders to get the perfect adjustment. Number eight, changing the background color. Well, this is pretty simple and obvious, but if you right click on the gray area around your image, you can change the background color of the editing screen. That comes in really useful when you're doing a lot, a lot of editing and you're adding some split toning and some subtle colors into the highlights or the shadows. And you're basically starting to shift all your colors to a green, a blue tone, something. And actually your sky, for example, should be gray or a very neutral color. Then it's really useful to just make that background white and then that color tone will really jump out at you and you can actually see what color you're shifting to and it's much easier to correct. So I use that all the time to make sure that my highlights and my shadows are as neutral as possible. Number nine is solo mode. So on the side panel when you're editing, you can sometimes get lost in all those panels. Basically, if you right click on any one of the panels and say solo mode, then whenever you click on one panel, it'll decollapse all the others. So it'll compress all the others and just have that one out. Personally, not a big fan of that. I just like them all out. But if you're getting to know Lightroom, that's a quite a nice way to keep things organized and neat. I know you guys sometimes want to keep it a bit more organized than others. And um, that's a nice way of doing it. So yeah, little secret tip there. Number 10, the last one is not really a hack, but it's really useful if you want to know all the shortcuts you can ever possibly imagine that you will use in Lightroom is to press command forward slash and it'll pop up with all the keyboard shortcuts that you can imagine. And the cool thing is though that depending on what module you're in, develop or library or whatever, it'll show you the shortcuts for that module. So different shortcuts and different modules. All right, that was it for the 10 tips. I've 
I hope you enjoyed them. Check out the blog post link below. There's some extra little things in there that I haven't mentioned here and some more explanations, especially on the smart previews and longer tips. Uh, read it and learn a little more. If you know something that I should know about and that you use all the time, I know there's lots of lots of other things that Lightroom can do that we could all learn about. Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. And if you wanna support me, check out my Lightroom preset packs. They are linked down below. And that's it for this time. See you next week for another video. Command or Control L. That is a great one. I can't remember what it does. I will do Shift, Command, ah, oh, I got it. Number one, Lightroom Sheet L and Shift L are a great, are a great. Cancel that. Lightning gibberish.